What's up, LHS, and welcome back to Blue Level News. I'm Franklin. And I'm Ian. Seniors, we have many announcements pertaining to you, so listen up. Seniors need to submit their baby pictures and quotes by November 15th, and your senior ads are on sale until December 15th. You can pick up an order form in A303. Make sure the Blue Level Bank has your height and weight, too. We need this, so we order the correct size for your cap and gown. And while you're there, sign off the spelling of your name. This to ensure that your diploma is correct. Additionally, your senior fee of $75 is due by February 28th. The Blue Devil Bank is taking payments now, or you can pay online. FBLA, FBLA meeting today after school in A306. Speaking of FBLA, they will be having their yearly Princess Breakfast fundraiser on November 10th to 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tickets are $10. Remember, the cost is per person, so be sure to get tickets for each adult and child attending. Better Club will have their convention meeting tomorrow at 2.30 in Miss Carpenter's room to discuss competitions. If you need a place to work, study, use a Chromebook, or <coughs> seek writing help after school from 2.30 to 3.30, the writer's room will be open November 12th and be to 11. The bank still has long sleeve homecoming shirts in all sizes for $15. And you can also pre-order junior class shirts and art club shirts at the bank as well. The bowling team has been selling t-shirts since their season started. They are $15 each. Contact any member of the LHS bowling team to get yours today. Veterans Day is quickly approaching, and you may be wondering exactly what is Veterans Day. According to the History Channel, Veterans Day originated as Armistice Day. On November 11, 1919, the first anniversary of the end of World War I, Take a look. Soldiers from wars both old and new march down city streets. Flags hang from homes, businesses, even car antennas. Ceremonies remember those who dutifully served their nation. It's Veterans Day, or Remembrance Day, as it's known in much of the world. A time to honor members of the armed forces. And it all began in a railroad car with a document to end the war to end all wars. World War I, also known as the Great War, shocked the global community with its unprecedented toll in human life. Untold millions were killed. Germany was running low on manpower and supplies, so they agreed to sign an armistice, or truce, in the French commander Ferdinand Foch's private rail car. On the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, all was quiet on the Western Front. The fighting had ended. Exactly one year later, President Woodrow Wilson decreed that Americans should observe a moment of silence at 11 a.m. to remember the armistice and to embrace the peace. Other Allied nations commemorated the peaceful anniversary as well. In England and Canada, citizens wore paper poppies. Poppies had become a symbol of the armistice, the poem, Flanders Field, described a one-time battlefield. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. In America, the nation's first unknown soldier was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery on Armistice Day, 1921. He was a casualty of the Great War. Since that first memorial, other unknown soldiers from America's wars have been interred in the tomb and it's become tradition for the president or one of his representatives to lay a wreath on the monument every November 11th. A resolution was passed in 1926 inviting all Americans to remember Armistice Day and the soldiers who fought so hard for peace. The idea caught on. By 1938, the day was marked with so many ceremonies and parades, Congress made it a legal holiday, giving people the day off work. After World War II and the Korean War, Americans wanted to open up the holiday to include not just World War I veterans, but all who served in combat. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower, a World War II vet himself, legally changed the U.S. Armistice Day to Veterans Day, honoring those who served in all American wars. For a brief time, starting in 1971, Congress moved the holiday to the fourth Monday in October, giving Americans a three-day weekend. But most people rejected the idea. The traditional date of November 11th, the anniversary of the Great War's ceasefire, was too historically important to forget. President Ford reversed the law in 1975, returning Veterans Day back to its rightful date. 
Over the decades, the holiday has changed with the times. Originally, it was a call for world peace. Then in the US, it became a day to remember war veterans. Today, Veterans Day is set aside to honor not just those who served in war, but also those who have served their nation in peace. To honor our veterans, our band will host its third annual Veterans Day concert this Sunday at 3 p.m. The concert is free and will feature a lot of great music. The marching band will also be performing in the Lemon Veterans Parade this Saturday. The parade begins at 10 a.m. Blue Devil players going to the field trip November 14 need to get the pink form signed and bring them to Miss Sweet ASAP. Please see Mr. Judkins in B211 if you are interested in tutoring students who need help in English. Students must be competent in grammar and writing skills. Lebanon Humane Society is having a big photo contest fundraiser. Each photo submitted costs $1 and prizes will be rewarded to the fifth, first place winner of each category. The categories that you may submit are the cutest, funniest, or spookiest. You may pay your $1 to Miss Jordan in C200 and receive the email address for you to submit your digital photo to. Photos will be taken until November 9th. Winners will be announced on November 14th. LHS Magazine submissions are due December 5th. They need to be brought to Miss Marion B106 or Miss Option A102. You will also email them to the Lebanon High Book Club email. Additional, there will be a book meeting every Wednesday. The first FOSA lock-in will be this Friday night. In order to attend, students must be FOSA state or national affiliated. See any HOSA sponsor for permission slips today. Now let's give it up to the HD Word of the Week. Today, children, we will learn a new word. It was imminent to happen. Well, what do you know? Imminent is an adjective that means something is about to happen or will happen. So we'll have to study this? No. Sorry. Why would you have to study? Well, isn't that how Homer will? Works. Well, I guess it's imminent, but I'm going home soon. <laughs> <laughs>